with Carol O'Sullivan. Hi, Carol. Hi. Uh, what do you do, Carol? What's your job? Um, I'm a senior lecturer in translation studies at the University of Bristol, which means that I run the MA program in translation there, mm -hmm. and I'm subject lead for translation, so PhD supervision, some other okay. graduate teaching. Yeah. And you're new there? Or and I'm new. I just so you've set, you've set up the program? or um, We've sort of consolidated the PhD program. Uh, the MA program was already running. So mm -hmm. again, that's okay. a question of you know building, developing, seeing okay. where you can go from okay. here. And you went from And Portsmouth. I went from the University of Portsmouth. To yes. OK. You're also important editing these days. <laughs> about Tell that. us about that. <laughs> but um, yeah. I am the associate editor of the journal Translation Studies, which mm -hmm. is published by Radlidge. Mm -hmm. I work with Valerie Hennetuk, um to bring out three issues a year Good. of uh, of scholarship. So um, this my is one of our main journals. This is a it's, it's a yes, it's it's yeah. a it's a great journal. We were very honoured to take it on a couple of years ago from the previous editors, mm -hmm. Michael Wolf and Kate Sturge, and. Um, we uh, so it's got a cultural studies sort of focus, an interdisciplinary focus. Okay. What about your own research? What what research interests do you have? Um, well, I started out in literature, in something like part of lit literature, um, and then uh, by accident of what, what I was having to teach, I moved into then thinking about film. So I would say the main things have been uh, thinking about literary translation, thinking about censorship and recently thinking about subtitling and various mm -hmm. forms of audiovisual translation. Okay. Particularly the history of audiovisual translation, the way it's developed. Okay. So you're doing a lot of quite different things then, or you see it as a... So it, it's sort of one thing follows another, generally. Yeah. I mean, there's, there, are, there, are, there are always a couple of things happening at the same time. Good. But um, at the moment, it's pretty much only the, um, the work on, on the history of screen translation. History of screen, screen translation. translation. And there are different threads within that right. of different kinds of... Okay. Phenomena. Can we go back to your when you were in your mid twenties? Mm -hmm. um, where were you? What were you doing? Right um, in my mid twenties, I was. Uh, um, I finished. I just finished my degree, and I had the chance to do a year um, on a, a sort of a sort of master's level study. So wh where where was your degree? Ma I at Dublin. Trinity Good. Dublin. So you, are you you're Irish. I'm Irish. Good. Okay. Yes, and I studied in Dublin yes. for as an undergraduate. Um, uh, Italian and French. So at Trinity. At Trinity. Okay, and then. And then I got this chance to go for a year to Trieste to the Scuola Interpreti, mm -hmm. where I studied with a number of lecturers who don't remember me because I wasn't very good at going to classes. But Italian but wasn't one of your languages. Italian, it, it, was, it was. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. Yes. So, um, uh, so I, I, I went to some excellent classes. I did an independent research project with an affiliation to Trinity. And then I got an opportunity to do a master's. I applied various places and I got accepted to Cambridge mm -hmm. to do a master's in European literature. And that seemed like an opportunity that I... So, so you went from languages into a translation and then into literature, or how did this... Yes, I mean, my languages out? degree was very, was very literature, literary focused. Yes. We started with Dante, you know, and you went up to Calvino, you know, uh -huh. in French. You started with medieval French, you know, and you finished somewhere around South. And um, so... I uh, then I, I was interested in translation already as a skill as mm -hmm. I, I had I'd done classical languages at school and that had was very heavily translation oriented as, as a in terms so, of so you, language you get to Cambridge but they're not doing translation studies not, there at no, all so how no. did you fit in so at the time I had this fantasy that I was going to work on medieval French and um, so that was marvelous because I got to play with manuscripts you know they had wonderful manuscripts in the, in the libraries yeah. so um, and I ended up doing a thesis by various sort of biographical accidents, really, and I ended up interest, becoming interested in, interested in Benjamin, Walter Benjamin, and Derrida. It was a very theoretically critical theoretical course. Is this your doctoral thesis? This is the so this was my MA, my yeah. MPhil thesis. Okay. Was on Kuno and the Exorcista Stil and Derrida and Benjamin, and then. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about this. Okay. <laughs> and then I, I wanted to stay. I was very happy in yeah, Cambridge, and I yeah. wanted to stay. So uh, in the French department, were willing to to have me, you know, cuckooing in the French department working mm -hmm. on translation. Mm. So I, I developed a project, uh, which 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 actually ended up being a lot about Irish literature, about Joyce and Beckett and translation. But I think okay. a, a, a PhD, that was your PhD. That was thesis? my PhD. Yes. Okay. Translators of Joyce, Beckett, and Kuno, and also those writers as translators. Yes. Of, of people's work and it was okay. fun. That's just interesting because there's no, I mean, Kirsten Malkia was at Cambridge and left, yes. and then this is, you know, we don't know. But literature, literature, literature studies addresses translation. Yes, very much so. And I mean, yes. theoretically, in terms of the kinds of work that, you know, of, of, of the kinds of, of sort of more philosophical 
side yes. of writing about translation, that was very, very much in the air. So, um, and the problems of translating Derrida were, st were, you know, were still pretty topical. He was still very heavily read, you know, as as a critic that one reads. So the issues of translating him mm -hmm. and what that might do for his the understanding of how his work is in the different, you know, in say uh, North America versus Europe and so on. that was. Um, uh, but actually, Kirsten Malmkier was at Cambridge also while I was in there. Linguistics, in linguistics, in yes, linguistics, and I she had this research group yes. with Louis Kelly. Yes. And and so I, I went to a few of those sessions, okay. and those were wonderful. Okay, yes. so there, so was, there was, was sort some, of something yes, there. Yes, yes, for sure. sure. The translation study still seems to be excluded from the the top echelons of the British Academy. <laughs> well, the, people have a very funny attitude yeah. to translation. I think, unjustly, it's thought to be something with a set of methods and a conceptual frameworks which are not perhaps as abstruse enough or, or <laughs> theoretical enough. You have to enough. be more abstruse, yes. <laughs> <laughs> or somehow not, the, 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 are somehow separated from the broader currents of thought in say post-structuralist thought or psychoanalytic thought, or sure. which are still very, very fashionable in, you know, But when you look at, the, at that scholars, sort of thought, so, yeah. it's very translational in yes. its very nature. Yes, so. but somehow there isn't that strong a dialogue between the two. You know, there doesn't seem yes. to be, uh, you know, um, people in translation studies are not necessarily reading Derrida on translation. And people who are interested in reading Derrida or Ricoeur or whatever on mm. translation are not necessarily that interested in the questions we're asking in. Is that a problem of us being too empirical within standard mainstream translation studies? I think it's probably an inherited problem of interdisciplinarity in the sense that a lot of us have come also out of linguistics or you know via linguistics in some way and there are very different attitudes to what constitutes data to what constitutes academic register there are there are translational problems at the linguistic level i think in how we write our research and how we construct our papers maybe even that do you think we should be more well, theoretical is an easy term, but uh, more meta. We should be reflecting more on what we do in our descriptive studies. I'm not necessarily not reflective in a sort of in a in a in a formulaic sense. I, I, I'm torn. I, I'm torn between very much between two paradigms of academic writing. I really admire very clear, very Anglo-Saxon writing subject verb object which lays out the argument in a linear way and you follow it and every paragraph is a point and it's lovely and i love the kind of discursive work that is done in literary studies and critical theory where the materiality of the language works happy accidents mm. of of assonance and of of false friends or of cognateness make arguments mm. they, they have no concrete yeah. you know perhaps form but they're beautiful and they're intellectually very satisfying and I, 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 I yeah I think perhaps that's not a, a register that we find in translation studies very often yes well, it's it's there but not in but what's occupied the, the center ground I think yes, translation yes. Studies. so let's see so you do your wonderful thesis at Cambridge on uh, Joyce and Beckett and Kedo mm -hmm. Derrida mm -hmm. what happens then um, what happens then I was very lucky just as my funding ran out I got a job at the British Centre for Literary Translation in a role which was partly academic and teaching and partly organisational and promoting literary translation. So I had four years where I got to meet a lot of translators and spend a lot of time working workshops and talking to publishers and talking about the sort of was business that side. that before Valerie went there? That was before Valerie okay, went there, right, yes. Yeah. yes. Okay, good. Um, and so that was at East Anglia? That was at East Anglia. Okay, good. And that was, and they, I mean, they did and do wonderful work there, you know, for um, bringing together the academy and, and the profession. Mm -hmm. And they run fantastic workshops and summer schools and, and all kinds of initiatives. So um, you were organ organizing things there? I was the associate what, director. Not, I was the sidekick. So it's not an director. academic job? It's a, it was both. It was half yeah. and half. Okay. It was Good. a slightly mongrel, mongrel sort of job. Oh. Um, but it was great and I yeah. learned a lot. And I taught, um, what was wonderful about it was I was teaching. A mixed constituency of translation students, um, modern language students, and creative writing students. So, for instance, we had a postgraduate unit in creative writing as translation and translation as creative writing. That's why would you leave that job? <laughs> yes. Job. So, when my contract finished, oh, okay. <laughs> I then looked around, um, and uh, the job I went to next was um, was a, a, a more conventional modern languages job. They had an MA in translation at Portsmouth that they wanted. Right. 
um, support for and they also had an Italian section that they wanted some teaching for. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I went, something I'd never done, I'd never taught Italian and I'd never, it was something I had always wanted to do. So I did a few years of being half and half Italian teaching and translation mm -hmm. and the program there grew so fast that eventually it was all translation. Good. And then, yes. Okay, and, and then from there to, and then to from Bristol. There to Bristol. So, yes. Okay. Along the way, have you had enough time to publish the great <laughs> ideas you've had? Um, are well, you no, I, I think there should be books <laughs> coming from you. Is it, no? um, I think that it's an interesting one. I think that uh, um, th I've got a lot of stuff in the drawer, you know. So there's probably a lot of stuff that that got that got thought about and thought about, and then I I think I did one of those things that a lot of graduate students do, which is I like angsted about things. You know, I said it couldn't possibly be good enough to send to a real Too publisher. Too much Debbie Duff. <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay. so um, so there's this stuff in the drawer, but um, I think that also has come with um, uh, you know with being part of a research community to to get that sense of what's um, not only what's personally interesting to me, but what's interesting to a wider constituency and where where, the, where, where one draws the line. I tend to I tend to research things around the edges, mm -hmm. the sort of eccentric fringes of of um, of whatever topics. So. Um, so the book, I did a book a couple of years ago, which was modern languages, which was languages and translation in film. Mm -hmm. And it was the, the bits of films that people had tended not to think about when mm -hmm. they thought about the other bits. Yeah. Um, so, and at the, yeah, I, I feel I've, I've, I've dipped into a lot of different things, partly from, because of moving from an English department to a modern languages department, which was heavily linguistics focused, to a modern languages department, which is now heavily literature focused. Mm -hmm. um, and having started out in such a department as well. So I, I'm sort of getting a feeling that the threads are coming together, you know. Yeah, you're definitely on the literary side of business. So yes, I think, account. yes, I am. Um, do you think there's too much linguistics in translation studies then, or do you think we, there is a dialogue of any kind between oh, those two sides? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think so. Um, I mean, I, there, are, there are people who are doing very, very good work within very empirical quantitative linguistic methods on literary texts, you know, I think that's yeah. Part, yeah, yeah. absolutely legitimate. I think that um, I think that linguistics has an awful lot to give um, generally to research, applied linguistics in particular. Mm -hmm. um, in the UK we're seeing this tremendous emphasis on impact on research that has to matter mm. to people who aren't academics. Mm. And it seems like things like corpus linguistics I think has an awful lot of potential. It's not an area, it's one of those areas, I, I love watching people do it well, you know, I don't yeah. understand it. Um, but uh, but so, so that seems to me a very, very interesting area. I, I know that there's been too much emphasis on literature in the past, but I... In, in the United Kingdom? In, in, in translation studies, you know, that it, in, in a sense it, it began with the texts that were worth translating were literature, and one didn't look much at translations of texts that weren't literature. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's changed, I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But I also think that literary texts use language and stretch language in a way which will always remain something which translation studies has to ask about. Okay, so that leads to the next question. What kind of research would you like to see? What problems do you think we should be working on? Uh, um, Apart from the history of screen translation. Okay. <laughs> Damn it, that was exactly <laughs> right, that was what I was going to sorry. talk about. No, I mean, I think that um, um, what I see in this particular project that I'm doing on the history of screen translation is that there's um, uh, there's a need for more precise textual scholarship and a greater awareness, perhaps, of textual scholarship in mm -hmm. translation studies. A lot of stuff that gets done in screen translation has in mind uh, almost an imaginary text, a translation of a film, which is the translation of the film. Mm -hmm. And of course, both those things are entirely contingent, yeah. and we're not always aware of that. So that's there's a lot of material of. Um, archival type material in translation in general that we don't explore. We're not going into old libraries necessarily and looking at physically looking at the copies of the books. So history of the book Good. is is an area I think where there's a lot of fa there's fantastic stuff happening in that. I mean, for instance, mm. if I can, can I have a tiny anecdote? I, I sure. was at a very interesting paper recently by somebody who's looking at the physical books in the in the medieval period. Um, what can we tell about how people handled them? Mm. You know, where d where did they where did they put the emphasis? What pages did they read most? Where did they dog ear? Mm. With medical books, you know, where are the blood splatters? What does this tell us about the diseases that they were <laughs> suffering from? Can we take DNA from the pages? Of the, and, mm. you know, for translation, how did people read in parallel? Did people read in parallel? You know, what can we tell about the way translation was consumed in physical books? I think there's, for me, there must be fascinating okay. questions okay. there. Um, but also, 
I think there's a bigger question about the academic community and in, in any discipline, including the humanities, which is about data, the generating of data, that translation studies has to move away from single person projects of a manual nature to generating big data, sharing data, you know, how can we have platforms where the raw data from people's projects can be made available for other scholars to mine. Yeah. I think that would be something that would enrich research for all of us. Excellent. Carol, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.